Kellogg's Pep! The super delicious cereal presents... The Adventures of Superman! Faster than a speeding bullet! More powerful than a locomotive! Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound! Look! Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Conquered and left for dead by Henry Miller, the Nazi atom man, Superman lies in a coma in a country hospital. With his costume torn and burned beyond recognition, his identity is unknown, and all hope for his life has been abandoned. Meanwhile, with Superman disposed of, Miller decided to test his atomic power by destroying part of Metropolis. And late at night, he ascended to the observation tower of the Metropolis Bank Building, 105 stories above the street. Alone now on the high tower, he fastens a tiny electronic converter to his throat and dons meshed metal gloves. A maniacal gleam in his eyes, he looks down at the great sleeping city below him and reaches to throw the switch on the throat converter to flash an electronic impulse to the deadly kryptonite atoms in his blood and send them surging in a stream of terrible atomic power through his metal gloved fingers. Listen. Now, now is the time. I will destroy part of Metropolis. Then the rest of the world will surrender to me. And Germany will rise from her ashes. And I shall be her savior. In a moment, Metropolis, you'll be dust. Only this one building will remain of all your glory. <laughs> Throwing the switch, the other man raises his curiously gloved hands, stretches them beyond the chest-high wall which surrounds the dark tower. He waits for the atomic energy to build and surge in his blood. For the first blinding white-hot flash, the avalanche of jagged green sparks, the forked lightning that leaps from his fingers. He waits one moment, two, and then the first whining crackle of the deadly atomic power begins. There it comes. What's wrong? Where is the lightning? Suddenly, the deadly crackling hisses and sputters out, and a look of alarm crosses the atom man's face. His hand flies to the switch on the throat converter, turns it, turns it again. Still, there is no flashing explosion, no snake-like green lightning. Frantically, the atom man turns the switch again and again, seeking for his terrible power. But he hears only the empty, futile click of the switch. And then, even the radioactive hum of the kryptonite in his blood fades away. He rages, and then he gasps and pales as he remembers the warning of the brilliant half-mad scientist who had transformed him into a human monster. <gasps> the Teufel. He said my atomic power would diminish. He said the kryptonite in my blood could be exhausted. I've got to find the Scarlet Widow. She has more kryptonite. Oh, but how? I don't know her. I don't know where she is. Wait. Wait, before I left Germany, Teufel told me something. What was it? What was it? I remember. He said there was an address stitched in one of my gloves. Someone's coming out here. Uh, 11 o'clock, mister. I gotta close the tower now, here. Oh, it's the ele elevator operator. Got to get the converter and gloves off before he sees them. Okay, I'll be right with you. There, into my pocket with him. Uh, sorry to have kept you waiting. Oh, that's all right. I just have to see that everyone's off of the tower at 11 o'clock. <laughs> Those are the rules. I understand. Yeah, I'll take you down, huh? Hey, you couldn't see much tonight, could you, Hey? I didn't see what I wanted to, but I will the next time. Descending to the building lobby, the slim, blonde atom man leaves the car and walks rapidly to the street, his hat pulled low over his eyes, his coat collar muffling his chin. In the shadow of a doorway, he carefully examines his metal gloves, nods with satisfaction, then hails a taxi and is driven to a handsome apartment building in an exclusive residential section facing the park. In the foyer of a ninth-floor apartment, he gives one of his gloves to a short, slant-eyed manservant in neat, dark clothes, who disappears with it, then returns to conduct Miller into a luxuriously furnished drawing room. There, reclining on a divan, with a box of chocolates at his elbow, is a grotesquely fat man in a flowered silk dressing gown. Small, almost babyish features are set in a vast, pale, moonlight face, topped with thin, silky pink hair. As he listens, his pudgy hands constantly conduct chocolates to his tiny mouth. But as the atom man nears the end of his story, the fat man, who is known only as Sidney, pauses with a candy halfway to his lips, and his sleepy little eyes sparkle like cold blue diamonds. Superman dead, eh? Uh, I can't believe it. It's true. Superman dead. Uh, my boy, if that's... True. Will you stop saying if I tell you I killed him? Gently, Miller, gently. I'm accustomed to surprises, but this... This is the most amazing thing I ever heard. Amazing. Uh, I, all of us, were certain he could never be destroyed. We tried everything. Well, we can forget about Superman now. I need more kryptonite. And you've got to get it for me, Sidney. Uh, where does one get the kryptonite? A woman called the Scarlet Widow has it. 
The Scarlet Widow. Yes, do you know her? Who doesn't know the Scarlet Widow? She's the cleverest woman in the world. And the most dangerous. I don't care about that. You know where she is? Mm, I can find out, if necessary, but... You told me the Teufel had to go to your father in Germany to have the stuff dissolved. No other chemist could do it. But now your father, your father's dead. I helped my father when he was working on the problem. I remember the formula for dissolving it. Of course, we'll need a good chemist. Mm, securing the chemist won't be too difficult. But dealing with the Scarlet Widow is another matter. Very expensive. So what? You must have plenty of money. No man ever has enough money. And I love money more than anything in the world. Are you sure you won't have a chocolate? These are really delicious. I said I don't want any. Look, Sidney, you don't seem to understand. Once I'm the Atom Man again, I can destroy Metropolis, London, Moscow. I can destroy all of our enemies. I'm not interested in destroying our enemies. And destroying cities is a great waste. Great ways. Cities represent wealth, and wealth is all that matters. I'll get someone else to help me. Go ahead. Go ahead. You won't get very far. Probably not even a mile from this house. What do you mean? Haven't you seen the papers? Or heard the radio tonight? The police and the <laughs> FBI are looking for you. Already? Of course. That's why I think you'd be wise to place yourself in my hands. You, all you want is money. I have no money. Uh, but once you have atomic power, we can get plenty of money. All the money in the world. What do you mean? Mm, it's very simple. Suppose, <clears throat> suppose you destroyed Metropolis, or at least a part of it. Yes, I think that would be an excellent idea. The world would then know our power. But instead of destroying London or Moscow or any other city... And we only threaten to do so. <laughs> Can you imagine them refusing to pay us anything we ask to spare them? <laughs> well, what do you say? Fine. When do we start? Oh, wait, 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 wait. First, first you must pledge to follow my orders exactly. In everything. Agreed? I... Uh, <laughs> I know that look in your eye, my friend. You think once you're the Atom Man again, you'll finish me off. As you did twice. No, 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 of course oh, not. Oh, no, no, don't bother to lie. Let me warn you, I can protect myself even against your atomic power. Uh, Gito! Yes, Master. If I know you, Gito, and I think I do, you uh, <clears throat> manage to overhear my conversation with Mr. Miller. Yes, Master. <laughs> what a rogue you are. I think that's why I like you. And am I wrong in assuming that you've already made inquiries of our people about the Scarlet Widow? Uh, uh, that is correct, Master. Mm -hmm. Is she... Uh... <laughs> In Metropolis, Zito? Yes, Master. Wonderful. Here, have a chocolate. Thank you, Master. Look, Sidney, let's not waste time. Let's get... When, when money is involved, I never waste time. <laughs> and when as much money as this is involved, money beyond counting, then I can act swiftly indeed. What's that? Oh, keep calm. It's only the clock. Midnight. But I'm sure the widow will be glad to see us. <laughs> she loves money as much as I do. Bring my coat and hat, Zito, and order the car. We're going visiting. His fat baby face beaming, Sidney removes his dressing gown and laboriously dons the greatcoat which his servant brings him. Then, panting, he waddles from the apartment with Jito and the eager Atom Man. We'll return in a moment for the tense climax of today's episode. But right now, here's a word from your announcer. You know, a certain young lady registered a complaint with me the other day. Sure, said I'd been neglecting the girls when I talk about those swell new comic buttons that come in packages of Kellogg's Pep. We have just as much fun as the boys do, she said, wearing those smart-looking buttons on our jacket or dress and collecting all the different buttons and trading duplicates with our friends. And you know, she's right. All the gang gets a big kick out of this series of 18 different comic buttons. They're all done up in full comic strip colors on white enamel sturdy metal buttons that are so doggone smart-looking that, well, they're really on the beam. So hop to it, gang. Today, ask Mom to get you several packages of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal, Kellogg's Pet. That's the only way you can get these new comic buttons, you know. You can't buy them, and you don't send either money or a box stop. You just look inside the pet package for your prize. There's a prize for you in every package of P-E-P. Pep, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now back to the adventures of Superman. As the Atom Man and the Master Spy, Sidney, are en route to the Scarlet Widow's hideout, Superman still lies unconscious in the Linwood Hospital 50 miles away. In the last hour, he has been mumbling, incoherent, disjointed sentences. Near the bed in which he lies, their faces grave, Dr. Bruce, chief of staff, speaks quietly Adams. with Dr. Jacob Sims, a world-famous specialist, Adams. summoned from Metropolis. Adams, no. 
You too would say the case was hopeless then, Dr. Sims. I'm afraid so. You've tried all the usual shock methods to bring him out of his coma? Yes, but not even Benzedrine increased his heart action. If only his skin hadn't become impenetrable. Yes, it's an amazing thing. His skin texture shows no sign of calcification. I, I can't understand it. I can't either. But it has become impenetrable, so it's impossible to give him an injection. Poor chap, I doubt if he'll last the night. Well, it was very good of you to rush down here, Dr. Sims. Not at all. I'm terribly sorry I can't be of more help. But it's a most interesting case. I'll walk you to your car. Is the verdict of the two doctors final? Is there no hope for Superman? Tomorrow's episode is tense and exciting, fellows and girls. So don't miss it. Tune in, same time, same station. And listen to The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Fellows and girls, be sure to follow The Adventures of Superman. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station, by the grand old Kellogg Company of Battle Creek. And for other thrilling adventures of Superman, see your local newspaper. Superman is also a copyrighted feature, appearing in Superman DC Publications.